Hello, Jeffrey Martin here, director of the Center for the Study of Non-Symbolic Consciousness and a research professor and director of the Transformative Technology Lab at Sophia University in Palo Alto, California, the heart of Silicon Valley, where we research how seekers can become finders and how finders can become explorers. And we do that so that everyone, including you, can live your most powerful and purposeful life. All right, so I get a lot of questions about things like enlightenment, non-duality, persistent mystical states, transcendental consciousness, and so on, because for 10 years, we've really sort of led the largest scientific evidence into this, or largest scientific research project into this for all around the world. We come from a psychology, cognitive science, uh, neuroscience type perspective in terms of how we examine this. And one of the things that people often ask is, you know, what's the right form of this? There's got to be a right form of this, right? There's got to be some form of this that is the proper one. So, you know, you've dealt with thousands of research participants. You're the only people who have, you know, developed a cross, um, you know, cross system, cross religion, cross whole bit um, classification system for this. You've got to know, listen, hey, which one of these, which one of these is the real one? Well, that's just about the last question you want to ask me. And the reason for that is because that's exactly right. We have done a lot of work on this. And we do have, I think it's probably the only um, massively data-driven cross-cultural, um, cross religion and spiritual, atheist and agnostic or whatever categorization system for this. And the conclusion that it led us to is that any of them are the right one. The most important thing is to just experience any of them. Now, that's a controversial perspective, and I recognize that, because most of the systems that are out there, and most of the teachers and, and um, people who talk about this that are out there, they often have a kind of a pedal to the metal approach to this. You know, they want to push the gas pedal all the way to the floor. And they just want you to go, 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 go as far and as deep into this as you possibly can. We don't think that makes any sense. Um, and the reason is because, first of all, each one of those systems only had a certain part of the map. And that's become very clear to us over time. And so, for instance, let's say you're in mystical Christianity. Um, well, we call these locations, we call the different types of them locations, because I don't like levels. Um, and so, you know, they deal with location two, location three. And by the time you're at the end of location three, you're basically maxing out the maximum Christian mystical experience. Uh, that's great, there's a location four. <laughs> there's location five, six, seven, uh, and so on, right? There's also a location one. <laughs> so, you know, they've got this slice of the map that they consider the valid thing for them, but what about all the other parts? Uh, what about all the other pieces of the map? And so then you're trying to figure out, okay, well, then what about the ones who know about one, two, three, four, and five? Does that make them superior? And should we be trying to go to five? Uh, and that's better than Christianity, right? Because Christianity is just two and three. Listen, this is all crazy. Um, the thing that we've learned more than anything else is just get on the continuum. It's so much better regardless of where you're at from normal ways that people experience the world. We have all kinds of videos, all kinds of stuff that you can see on this that address that point specifically. So first, lesson one, get on the, get on the continuum. Get anywhere on it. I don't care what the location is. Just get there. Now, second, uh, probably the location that's right for you is going to depend on what your life is like, right? So if you think about it, this notion that you should just go as far and as fast as you could, it's often based on people only having a limited view of the map, right? So if you say, well, location three is the end, might make a lot of sense to tell people, hey, just go for location three, right? You get there and it's this place that's just filled with love and joy and compassion. It seems like as good as human nature can really get, right? Um, problem with that is, when they encounter someone in location four. And this happens. So for instance, I have a very dear friend 
who was in location three for most of her life, transitioned to location four, went to her spiritual teacher, said, hey, here's how I'm experiencing things now. It's, it's like location three was amazing, but the freedom that I'm experiencing at location four, it's like nothing I've ever experienced before. And I've had all these other experiences. The spiritual teacher looked at her and said, whoa, what has happened to you? What are you not wanting to look at? What are you blocking? You know, because her description was so different than location three. There was just no frame of reference. The teacher was like, location three is it. It's the end. You know, what, what do you mean you're coming to me saying you've had something else? You've gone off the deep end. You've gone off the path. You got to come back to three. How can I get you back to three? We got to get you back here, right? And actually, that person believed her went back to three. In reality, she'd gone further. So people's perspectives are often limited by their knowledge of the terrain to begin with. And what they're advocating is to go as far as they think. Now, another side to this, and it's a practical side. Different locations are good for different things, right? So I tell the story oftentimes of a friend of mine who's an engineer, and he spent a long time in Location 3, and Location 3 winds up being an awesome place to solve problems if you're an engineer who's out there solving difficult problems. Turns out to be a crappy place to run a business from, which eventually his awesome problem-solving skills led to him running a startup. And he realized pretty quickly, wait a minute, in this Location 3 place where I can solve problems in an awesome way, I have a tendency of giving away the store, and we're a startup. We don't have a lot of store to give away. Uh, I better do something here, right? And so he shifted to a different place on the continuum, to a different location that was more appropriate for living his life in that situation. And that's really how I think about this. So if you say to me, is there a right place to, uh, that everyone should inhabit in terms of PNSE? I say, no, I don't think there is. I think you have to decide what's right for you. And we've got a lot of material out there. You can totally understand the different locations. You can see the different classifications. And you can see what's probably the best fit for you. If you have a family, don't have a family. You've got a certain type of job versus another type of job versus no job versus retired versus a student versus whatever, right? We're all in totally different life circumstances. You need to figure out which one of these types of persistent non-symbolic experience are appropriate for you. And then that should be the one that you target. Now, now you're probably thinking, but hold on. Like, how do I make sure I just get to that one and I don't get to one that's out of sync with, you know, what's optimal for me? Well, that's the tough part. <laughs> because there aren't a lot of people out there that have broad maps of this, that really hasn't been developed very comprehensively to this point. We provide some of that guidance when people are going through and using our research protocol, the finder's course protocol. Um, but out there in the public space, you really have to do your homework. Uh, so you, it starts with getting an understanding of different locations, figuring out where you're at, and then figuring out who might be teaching or who might have a system around where you want to be, right? They're probably going to be talking about it being, you know, the place, the best form of PNSE, the only form, the only true form of PNSE, whatever. Just ignore all that. Uh, but just be grateful for the fact that they found a way to get you to that spot. And so it could take a little research on your part. It can take a little homework on your part. It can take a little experimentation on your part. Maybe you'll have to find three or four or 10 or 12 of those people that all have different methods until you find the method that works for you. That's another key part of this. It's not just about finding any method that gets you to someplace. You've also got to find the method that works for you. So we have other videos and stuff where you can see that. Now, before we end this video, there's one thing that I do want to say to you, and that is... Thank you for being interested in this, because there's very few people who even know about this. And it's so incredibly important for both you personally, because it's going to completely change your life when you transition into persistent non-symbolic experience. And by the way, you totally can. This is not 30 or 40 years ago when you have to plan on spending a decades of your life, basically, to try to reach this. And then maybe, you know, you have to be like the lucky 0.02% of people who actually get there, even after all of that effort, and most people fail and never get there. That's the old days. We're now at a point where people can get there. They can get there pretty reliably quickly. If you look at our own protocol, if you look at the finder's course protocol, 73% um, of people in less than four months, somewhere between a week and four months, basically. That's huge. Another 26% of people, temporary experiences, huge. 
1% of people, nothing. The exact opposite of the old days, where like maybe 1% of people, if they were super lucky, got there, and all the rest were just frustrated. So it's a new day. You're coming to this at the right time. Even if you've been doing this for a long time, so what? This is your day. You can totally get to PNSE, right? And you should. Uh, no one has, I think, looked into this on the level or the scale that we have. And you better believe we were looking for psychopathology, we were looking for self-deception in people, we were looking for them deceiving us. We didn't find that. We found an incredible next sort of generation, next level of human consciousness, if you will. So I think you're crazy to not be pursuing it. And if you've got other fears around it, probably we've got videos that address those fears. You, those, those, none of your fears about this are, are founded unless you are in some sort of psychological difficulty. If you're, you know, schizophrenic or bipolar or, um, or suicidally depressed or you've got some sort of major psychiatric condition, you should stop thinking about PNSE right now and you should get yourself professional help. You should get yourself stabilized for the long term and maybe later come back and think about this. But for most of you, that's not the case. It's probably not the case for you. And so you're probably living a normal life out there. Maybe you're depressed or maybe you're a little down in the dumps. So what? I don't care about that. Um, basically, you're normal. So you can get there and you can get there quickly. And you really should. I'm a, I've become a big advocate of this. I really believe that you should reach for that brass ring, that you should try to get to persistent, ongoing forms of non-symbolic experience because they just they change everything. You know, we have all kinds of videos, all kinds of people interviews. There's back gap interviews that Rick Archer does that are fantastic with all kinds of normal people talking about this and the change it made in their life. And so you don't need me to tell you about any of that, I hope. Uh, but you can find it all out there if you're not familiar with it. The thing is, you're a rare bird. You've, you know, you're out there and you're learning. There's, first of all, not a lot of people that are really hardcore learners, and learners are doers. Learners are the people that get stuff done in the world, right? So you're a rare bird because you're a learner and you've turned your attention to this. And this is something that you're thinking about. This is something that you're investigating. And I can't encourage you strongly enough to come in this direction and to really try to cross the line over into persistent non-symbolic experience. Um, it will make such a huge difference, not just in your life, but in the lives of the people around you. And the more people that we can move in this direction, we think right now it's probably about a half a percent of the population. There's millions of people that experience this, uh, by our estimation. But if we can, as we can inch that up, you know, as we can grow that during this critical juncture in human history, where so much stuff is hitting the fan. Um, just the reductions in conflict, the reductions in consumption, the reductions in all sorts of stuff that are just, I think, natural to have flow from this. Um, they're just profound. It's just, there's huge hope that this holds out for all of us. And so, you know, I'm so grateful that you've found this video. I'm so grateful that you found our work. I hope you explore it. Um, I hope you just keep exploring on all the amazing stuff that's around us on the internet, I think we can help you to find a very useful framework so that you can put everything else into um, easy to understand, uh, into an easy to understand framework. Uh, but I just can't encourage you enough to really keep going in this direction, keep pursuing, because it's people like you that we really need to produce this change that's so desperately needed right now.